His software is probably on your computer right now. When this famed tech mogul was found in Guatemala on the run, it was because a reporter accidentally leaked his GPS coordinates. The authorities had some questions about his neighbor's murder, and yet that's quite possibly the least dramatic thing that happened to him. This is the true crime story of John McAfee, his literally unbelievable life and suspicious death. Hi friends, I'm Katie, and this is Katie Does Crime. A huge, overwhelming thank you to my very first patrons, Carol and Action Jackson. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description of this video in case you'd like to support the channel. Today's case involves so much murder, escape, tax evasion, and presidential campaigning that it's hard to even know where to begin, and so many lies that it's hard to know what to believe. So let's begin in Belize in April 2012, where American software multimillionaire John McAfee was arrested at his beachside compound by local police. He says they stormed the grounds at 6 a.m. with bullhorns and automatic weapons while he was in bed with his 17-year-old companion. They used sledgehammers to break the doors to buildings that were already unlocked. They starved him and the people on his compound, refused them water, and shot his dog to prove a point. They accused him of having a firearm without a license, one of the firearms used to protect the property. The U.S. Embassy had to intervene to get him released from jail, and even then, he says the authorities kept his passport and lied about having confiscated it. McAfee said he'd given over $2 million in gifts to the local police, and he'd fed children and helped single mothers. He was 66 years old and wanted to do good with all of his money. He was developing a new medicinal plant type of antibiotic to cure diseases of the future. But when he wouldn't donate to a local politician, he says the man's associates waged a misinformation war on McAfee, calling local talk radio shows to complain about the white guy with the security guards who must be involved in something illegal. But this wasn't even the craziest thing that happened to McAfee in Belize. Later that year, his neighbor on the beach, Gregory Fall, was found dead in a pool of blood. The 52-year-old retired American expat had been found by his housekeeper, face up, shot in the head in his own home, and his laptop and phone were missing. A media frenzy ensued as McAfee was called a person of interest when it was discovered that the two had a dispute over dogs. Sitting down with him in an exclusive interview about his life and alleged involvement in that murder. Did you order a hit on him? Of course not, please. In November 2012, Greg Fall, the neighbor, two doors down from McAfee's beachside compound, was found murdered. Fall's family said it happened the night after Fall allegedly poisoned McAfee's dogs. Fall had complained to the local town council that McAfee's dogs were so vicious that he couldn't walk on the public beach in front of his home without them attacking. When four of the dogs were then found poisoned, Fall was the main suspect. Days later, Fall himself was dead. And when authorities went to question McAfee, he was nowhere to be found. Because he'd escaped to Guatemala after three weeks on the run in different disguises, such as a street peddler and a foul-mouthed German tourist. He tried to request political asylum from the Guatemalan government. He said he wasn't guilty of the murder of his neighbor, of course, but he didn't trust the corrupt officials in Belize to handle the case fairly. He hadn't given into those bribes like he was expected to, and he felt like he was being persecuted for exposing the authorities there in the international media. He expected to be killed in custody if he turned himself in. Now, this may all sound like paranoia, the ravings of a madman, and it's true that with McAfee, the line between truth and fiction is often very blurry. John McAfee is best known for his computer antivirus software, which came about in the late 80s when home PCs were on the rise. He was born in England on September 18, 1945, to an American father who was in the army and a British mother on an army base. He mostly grew up in Virginia, fearing the next beating from his reportedly abusive alcoholic father. But his father eventually shot himself when McAfee was 15 years old. He got a math degree in 1967 from Roanoke College and started working on his doctorate, but was expelled because of an affair with an undergrad who later became his wife. He'd been a nomad in his youth, living in Mexico in a van and making jewelry to sell to tourists. He'd worked for NASA, He'd hit rock bottom on drugs and gotten clean thanks to Alcoholics Anonymous. And he was a software engineer at Lockheed when he hired coders to figure out how to kill off the first known computer virus. 
Then he allowed everyone to download his new security software that automatically detected viruses free of charge, making it a household name. Retail customers paid for upgrades and corporations paid for licensing fees, and McAfee made millions of profits in only a few years. He more or less invented the antivirus industry. The early days of what became McAfee Corp sound like the blueprint for all of those modern Silicon Valley tech companies you hear about. Wiccan rituals in the lunchroom, a running tally of points scored for hooking up in different places around the office, a lunatic founder telling everyone the world's computers were all going to go kaput in March of 1992. They didn't, he was ridiculed, and at the height of his wealth, he was more or less forced out of his company. He cashed out his shares and became one of those rich guys with an entourage that followed him around as he did dangerous stuff for the thrill of it and created a yoga retreat where the classes were always free. One student said McAfee seemed incredibly generous at first, but it became clear that he just liked doing things for the attention and the women who were dependent on his money. He wanted to be noticed with his bleach blonde hair and his tribal back tattoos and his flock of young girlfriends. In the early 2000s, his thing of the moment was aero trekking, a new sport he championed where you fly a tiny plane, basically a hang glider with an engine, as low to the ground as possible in empty desert areas. When his nephew, the head flight instructor, killed himself and another passenger in a crash, the passenger's family tried to sue McAfee for $5 million. At the time, McAfee acted like the events surrounding the crash were a mystery to him, that his nephew must have suffered an unexpected stroke or something. But it came out later that the nephew didn't even have a real pilot's license and was an inexperienced flyer doing what would have been a dangerous maneuver even for a skilled professional. McAfee sold off his land and assets and moved to Belize, where his lawyers told him any U.S. lawsuit wouldn't be able to touch him. This is where we find McAfee the fugitive hanging out in Guatemala in December 2012 when he was wanted for questioning in his neighbor's murder. A Vice magazine editor and photographer were embedded with him on the run and were very braggy about how epic the journey was going to be. When they posted their very first very smug article, We Are With John McAfee Right Now, Suckers, Someone on Twitter noticed that one of the photos still had the GPS metadata attached. The Guatemalan police found and arrested McAfee, and Interpol interviewed him. Vice claims it totally meant to give away his location. McAfee then faked a heart attack to give his lawyer time to file some appeals so Guatemala would send him straight back to the U.S. instead of Belize. He settled in Portland with the escort girlfriend he'd met when she propositioned him, but they didn't escape the drama they'd left behind. A Central American drug cartel put a hit on him for $2 million, although then McAfee said it dropped to only $650,000, so he joked to USA Today that his value was in steep decline. To confuse his trackers, he would switch his phones and duct tape his old one to a random semi-truck in the hope of putting them off his scent for a few days. He would allow himself to be interviewed, but only while holding his guns. Not a lot was heard from McAfee again until 2016, when he tried to run for president of the United States as a libertarian candidate. It makes sense, considering that libertarians are known for wanting to limit the scope of the government's control. McAfee once told a reporter that he wouldn't mind if someone built a 25-story high-rise right next to him on the beach because who's to say that high-rises are a bad thing? His campaign video at the convention said no libertarian candidate had a chance of winning, so the party naturally chose someone else to represent them. In 2019, the estate of his neighbor in Belize sued McAfee for wrongful death in a Florida court and was awarded $25 million. He said the case was based entirely on the media's conviction of him and refused to pay a dime. He said he was never even suspected of the murder, merely a person of interest, and that the judgment was a legal extortion game aimed at the American wealthy class. Poor guy. In October 2020, McAfee was arrested while in Spain on U.S. tax evasion charges at the age of 75. The U.S. Justice Department said he didn't file his taxes from 2014 to 2018 while earning millions on everything from cryptocurrencies to the rights to his life story. He tried to hide his activity by asking others to set up accounts for him, dealing only in crypto, and using other people's names to buy yachts and real estate. They believed McAfee owed over $4 million in taxes, and it was time to collect. In March 2021, McAfee was indicted in federal court for securities fraud and money laundering after leading a pump and dump scheme on Twitter. You know, where he encouraged his followers to invest in a cryptocurrency that he held, and then he would sell it off as soon as the price got high enough. 
he'd tweet some coin of the day or coin of the week to his million followers. And once he said he'd eat his own on live TV if Bitcoin didn't hit 500K in a few years. It didn't, and he didn't. Too bad. McAfee was already hanging out in a Barcelona prison for the tax evasion charge when the SEC came calling, and it took until June 2021 for Spain to approve an extradition request to get him back to the U.S. He said that the extradition was politically motivated, that the U.S. government wanted to get back at him for being one of those blasted third-party candidates running for president. Spain disagreed. But just hours after the extradition approval came through, McAfee was found dead in his prison cell, apparently having taken his own life by hanging. McAfee's lawyer claimed that throughout their regular contact, there were no indications that he would ever do such a thing. And McAfee's wife at the time said the same. Lovers of conspiracy theories were reminded of the suspicious prison death of financier Jeffrey Epstein. And McAfee himself had said that if he was ever found dead by hanging, it would clearly be murder. He even got a whacked tattoo as an indication of how sure he was that he'd be set up. His wife said his last words to her were, I love you and I will call you in the evening. Of course, McAfee was a known trickster and may have chosen this method for his own death in order to fuel the intrigue. It didn't help anything that as soon as reports of his death surfaced, his Instagram feed posted the letter Q. It's unclear who was in control of his Instagram account at the time, but QAnon went wild. But in February of this year, Spain's court officially ruled that McAfee had died by his own hand at the age of 75 on June 23rd, 2021. This is already definitely the most convoluted case I've ever talked about, but I have to tell you some extra little tidbits that were just too juicy not to include. His former girlfriend was 16 years old when the 60-something McAfee met her, but that's the age of consent in Belize, so it's fine. But she shot at him one night in an attempt to kill him, and although she barely missed his head, she did cause him to go half deaf. Sometimes love is like that. You tried to shoot him? Uh-huh. Yes. I also tried to cut his throat, but he just said, he just leaned against the wall and said, do it. I could do it. And you stayed together after that? Oh, yeah. He loved me more, I guess. But he slept with one eye open. McAfee says he donated computers to the Belize police, but secretly installed spyware on them to give him access to their keystrokes, cameras, microphones, everything, after the first time they raided him. He was able to watch and listen, know when they were coming after him, and escape just in time. Seeing two police motorcycles, a black SUV, and a garbage truck coming down the street toward them on not garbage day one time, McAfee said he and his wife hid in a parking garage and waited as they heard people searching for them. Assuming the couple was hiding in a bin, the garbage truck crushed it and then left. They were luckily hiding somewhere else. But like, what world does this guy live in where someone's murder weapon of choice is a whole garbage truck? McAfee would plant information about himself falsely on the internet as he attempted to elude authorities and would-be hitmen. When asked by one judge why he would lie and say he lived in Honduras online, he said he wasn't under oath when he wrote that and thought it would be fun to see people try to serve him papers there. McAfee originally developed greenhouses, a lab, and a shipping dock for what he said was his antibiotic herb business, but his real interest seemed to be in finding an herbal compound that would become the female Viagra and boost lady libidos, if you know what I mean. There's an allegation that he drugged and assaulted one of his business partners, and there's also a rumor from a past girlfriend that he liked her to take a dump in his mouth. You know, in a romantic way. McAfee tweeted in 2018 that he had been poisoned by his enemies and was in the hospital for three days, but was leaving against the advice of his doctors because he had to go drop the wrath of God onto those who had done this to him. He of course knew who they were and where to find them. McAfee's home in Belize burned down after he left in what he called suspicious circumstances. He had another home in Tennessee where he said he kept finding empty cream cheese packets outside, obviously the trail of a pack of hungry hitmen. It was also at this home where he thought he heard someone in the crawl space and unleashed a wild spray of bullets into the walls. It was probably squirrels. McAfee was active on a Russian web forum where he would advise other readers on the best way to consume their MDPV, better known as the drug bath salts. In case you're curious, it's rectally, inserted using your middle finger. McAfee said he was the father of 47 children and his third wife said he was father of many, loved by few. I love that. 
You know, the more I read about John McAfee, the more I think that he had a tough childhood with his abusive dad and probably felt sorry for himself as an adult. During one of his court hearings, he said that if he was sent back to the U.S. at age 75, he would spend the rest of his life in jail. He said he hoped the Spanish court would see the injustice and that the U.S. was using him as an example. And how much of a martyr do you have to be to think that you shouldn't pay for your crimes just because you're old? This is a guy who spent his life on fully staffed mega yachts trying to make the female Viagra happen so his teenage girlfriends would want to bang more. I'm not sure how much sympathy that gets you. Of course, you have to remember that McAfee was heavily into bath salts and saw them as this perfect drug touting their smooth euphoria and mild come down. But he also warned that they gave him visual and auditory hallucinations and the worst paranoia of his life. So it's really hard to tell where the truth ends and the bath salts begin. So what do you think? Was he delusional? Were they really out to get him? Or both? Do you think that even his quote-unquote suspicious death was just one of his tricks? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning into my YouTube video. I'm just a true crime fan like you are, and I really appreciate you taking a chance on me. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you liked spending this time together. I'd be so appreciative. Until next time, I'm Katie, and this has been Katie Does Crime. But this is in the, sorry, the 52-year-old, he'd been a nomad in his use. Year use. <laughs> One student said Maxi <laughs> gave him visual and auditory hallucinations. This is a bit of a